Hey, I had a couple of requests to put together a video on how I'm making these planners, so I'm going to give it an attempt to do it. Preferably not with saying a bunch of ums or like or any of the other things that drive me crazy when I'm watching a video. The cover itself is about eight and a quarter. Actually, that looks about dead on. Eight and a quarter by five and a half. The spiral binding is three quarter. I did make the cover itself just, well, it's just bigger by about eighth of an inch on the sides so that if they wanted to put tabs there or something like that, they had the room for it. I'll give you a quick view of what pages I did put in here. I used a monthly with the plans, goals, month of. So this is just kind of, you could use it as a goal tracker, whatever you want to. Just a pretty blank page. Their weeklies. Another weekly. I did put a total of five weeklies in each month only because it drives me crazy to have a week start or end on a random day. So that's what I did there. And that just repeats throughout it. I kept it pretty simple just because of the amount that I had to make of them. So let me go ahead and give you an idea of how I did this. Now I will say that these were ordered online. It was just a digi kit by Nick the Booksmith. I can link her store in the description. And the printer I used really did not give this paper justice at all. And I will show you what the original was supposed to look like. So see, the original is much softer, not as dark or as sharp. Unfortunately, it was just the printer I had to use at the time, so that's what I did. All right, time to get started on all the fun. So. I have to use this paper cutter because my big one will not fit underneath the camera. So I would love to tell you that there was some kind of rhyme or reason to the sides that I made these, but it was really just, I had to get rid of the white around here. It, I couldn't let it go. It just drove me crazy. So that is what I did. So yeah, I just trimmed that off. Flipped it around. So at this point, all I'm doing is cutting off the white border. Oh, I missed some on that side, so I'll have to go back and trim that a little bit more. I did, however, learn that my printer is apparently a little weird. And it, when it prints, it prints a little bit more of a margin on one side of the paper than the other. So I'll have to go into the settings and try to change that. But it made it where when I made them two-sided, one of the sides is off just a little bit. Luckily, I didn't notice that till I was done with all of them. So I'm not going to go back and try to fix it at this point. Oh, I am noticing that my table and using this cutter is shaking the camera really bad. Sorry about that, guys. I ended up going just about a sixteenth shy of the five and a quarter. No, I didn't. I did these about five and a quarter. Can you tell how precise I was on all of this? So this just gives us a little bit of edge there. I didn't want to cut off too much of the decorative part, so that's why I didn't worry about it being lined up perfectly. Yeah, 
and we will go to about five and a quarter again. All right, so that is how I cut down the pages. I know, very high tech and fancy. On the covers that I did, I did laminate them. I don't love the look of lamination because it makes it all shiny and bright. The cover images I got, they were just like free downloads I found online. And to be honest, I don't even remember where I got them from. So if I got them from somebody and you're mad at me for not telling you thank you, thank you. But yes, I did laminate those. This is my little cheapo laminator that I have at home. It's Scott. I got it from Walmart and I think it had to have been less than like 30 bucks. I didn't do these covers at home because the amount that I had to do. So I am going to try to flip my phone because this is driving me crazy like this. And I'm gonna have an avalanche. Yep, nope, that's as good as we're gonna get. So we're gonna roll with that and act like I meant to. So there's the cover. All right, here is my other handy dandy machine -y thingy. High tech word. And I didn't think to make sure the handle would fit under here. So we are gonna fake it till we make it. It is a true bind. Um, I got this one again off of like Amazon. Yep, the quality of this video is gonna be horrible, but it is what it is. So all I did, now I went through, the first planner I did, I put together all the pages that I wanted to do, then I came through here and punched them. Then after I did the prototype on the other ones, I went through and all my monthly I did, punched them, then I went through all my weeklies, punched those. That wasn't the best. I should have done like I did in the first one and punched them all together. It seemed to, had, to have made it a little more Uniform, I guess, is a good way to describe it. Okay, so on this machine, what you're gonna do is you have a little guide over here so you can butt your paper up to it. But what you wanna do is make sure that your hole up here on the top, you're not like that on it. You want to make sure that your top hole is more in that realm so that you don't have one all cut wonky. But to be honest, after I got done with all the ones I did, I didn't really care how wonky they were cut. This machine will punch 12 papers at a time. So you just slide down the handle over here and that will be, that will punch it your papers. I had to try to hold the camera with one hand. You know when you pull them out, you have your holes in your paper. Okay, I couldn't stand it anymore and I had to move the camera. So, here is one that I'm getting ready to put together now. <laughs> I had to use very fancy high tech equipment here. Just safety pins to help hold my holes in the right spot. I put a, the back is just a piece of cardstock and just an off white color, so it would go well. Here's this piece. Now this part is probably gonna drive everybody crazy. I'm sorry, this is not the quietest machine in the world. 
and I just messed up all my holes again, but you know what? It is what it is. What I found to be the best is to go ahead and start your coil by hand. in your first hole and this would have been a whole lot better if it would have just all magically lined up and stayed together but you know it wouldn't be me if it worked easily so i'm going to pause this again so you don't get to sit here and watch me pull my hair out and i will be right back hopefully with this coil started Okay guys, I went ahead and actually started two in here and I'm going, this machine's kind of cool, it turns on and then this part spins to help the coil go through. This book is almost too thick for the coil, so it doesn't spin the coil in as easily as it would if it wasn't so thick and massive, but that's how I wanted to do it, so time to make it more difficult. I'm gonna apologize about the sound. However, I don't know how to do it where you could see it work without having to hear it work because it's not the quietest. Now it's also not the loudest, but whatever. Again, this would have worked better if I had had my holes line up a little bit better, but I was just trying to, trying to do it as effectively as I could, efficiently. I wasn't trying to make it not look good, but I think I rushed through on some spots that I should have taken more time. You live and you learn. So see, just that, when it catches it on the wheel, it spins it and helps it go through the hole. And all I'm doing is trying to kind of guide it through at certain spots and help it along. I mean, I'm sure if I just didn't mess with it, it would do it on its own, but I'm just afraid it's gonna, you know, wanna puncture the hole weird or something. Well, the one thing I can tell you about, oh, yep, let's throw the camera because you guys don't want to see this. But anyways, the one thing I can tell you that I did was I did not line this cover up very well. So I'll end up taking this one apart and redoing it. But for the time being, I'm just going to kind of show you how we finish it off. This machine did come with these weird little plier things. I don't know what they would be, but... They're weird shaped. Then I have my very high tech <laughs> um, wire cutters. So I would just go through and, you know, snip it off right there if I needed to. Yeah. I'm trying to move this so you guys can see. I did not line those two up well at all. Okay. But that is how it's going to be so I can make this video for you guys and then I'll fix it later. All I do is I take this one and I bend it down. So I'm trying to make sure that that's seen. So I bend it like that and then I come back through and usually on this one I actually use a different tool just I think it's a traditional pair of pliers I have, but I don't have them here on my messy table, so I am gonna roll with what I have. So all I'm trying to do is not break that off, but I did. Okay, yay for having a little extra room to work. So I broke it off, so all I'm doing is bringing a little part 
of the coil up here down to give me a little extra length since I messed up. Apparently I was getting just way too aggressive and didn't know my own strength. Okay. You know, if you guys weren't watching, I wouldn't have these problems. I'm not good at working under pressure. Plus, I'm trying to keep this video where it's not like four hours long and I'm already at 15 minutes. That is like 15 minutes you'll never get back from your life. Okay, so all I do is I wrap that around at both ends. So if I didn't have to go back through and redo this one, I would, you know, clip the coil at like that ring so that I have enough room. Do the same thing. Attach this coil to the next one so that your book flips open and you have all your pages and it's all nice and dandy. Okay, well that is how I did this kind of planner junk style and I will try to remember to link the store where I got these from because it was super easy. It made it so much easier to do these. Okay, thank you guys for watching.